Welcome back. Let's go on to task two of assignment one. Let's see what is that task two. Task two is to create a column vector of 200 evenly spaced values. Hmm. It's a vector with a lot of different values in it, starting at zero and ending at the range D. You're going to assign this vector to the variable x1. And there's a tip to use the function linspace. Ooh. Okay, a lot to take in. Let's just look at the physics to see if it helps us understand why, what does this vector mean called x1? And it starts at 0 and ends at d. Looking at the physics, and I'm going to zoom out a bit here so we can see what we're looking at. It means that at 0 is where you threw the rock, basically. That's x0 here. That's what it means in the formulas. And d is the distance. I guess d, this d should be right from where you threw it, actually. This d is the distance it travels before it hits the floor. So this vector, x1, is going to have lots of values, and they're going to represent the different horizontal values of lots of different points along the trajectory. That's what the physics mean. Let's see if we can do this in MATLAB now. There's a tip to use the linspace function. Pfft, don't know how that works. Well, let's go to the MATLAB documentation. So let's cr just cross over to documentation. I'm going to write the word linspace. Oh, here's some suggestions. A function. Yeah, I want a function. Linspace is the name of the function. It generates linearly spaced vectors. Well, that won't make sense to most of you, so don't worry about that. Syntax shows you how you write this into code. You're going to write y equals something. But in our case, we want x to equal something, okay? x1 and x2. So what is x1 and x2? It returns a row vector of 100 evenly spaced points. Okay, if something doesn't make sense to you, copy the code and run it. See what you get. We're going to have to give a value for x1 and x2. This is going to give us a vector where the first value is going to be x1. The last value is going to be x2. There's going to be a lot of values in between them, which are evenly spaced. Let's give that a try. So let's go to the code and give that a try. It's usually better to do this in MATLAB online or on a, phys on a downloaded MATLAB on your computer, because this is a bit slow, this one. But it works just fine. So if you want, you can just copy it directly down and run it. You're going to get an error. It's going to say, x1, I don't know what that is, what is x1, what are you talking about, can you please help me? So you need to tell the computer what is x1 and x2. But in our case, we wanted a lens space from 0 up to the distance d1. And we wanted to call this variable x1. Let's run that and see what we get. OK, something's come out. It says x1 equals... And then it's got a funny message, columns, 1 through 19, 20 through 38. Blah, blah, blah. It says it has a lot of columns. So in general, MATLAB is kind of treating its vectors as if they're matrices, in a way. A matrix can have values along a row, or it can have values along a column. And this is quite important when you're doing engineering um, and mathsy problems, because when you do matrix multiplication, it matters if you're multiplying a column vector uh, against a matrix or a row vector. What this is trying to tell us is that this x1 has many columns, means that this is a row. The question asked for a column vector, not a row. So what do we do about that? How do we make a column vector into a row? So I'm just going to, the answer is to think in maths, what would it be? In mathematics, in mathematics, it would be the function transpose. So I'm going to use that function now. So how would I even know what to do in MATLAB? So think of what it means in mathematics. It's to transpose something, to make it from a column into a row, a row into a column. If you don't know that, don't worry. You're learning that now. Transpose. And if you look, there is a description of how to use transpose. You can just write the word, it just call the function transpose, and it will change something from being a row into a column, or if it's a matrix, it will give you the transpose of that matrix. Don't worry too much about that. 
but let's just give it a try. In this course, what we're going to do is just going to give things a try until we kind of understand how they work, okay? So now I'm going to run this. First I've calculated x1, and notice that, did I get 200 values? I don't think I did. And then I'm going to transpose it, but let's run that first. Ooh. Now it's a column vector. It means that they're all on one column. It's kind of visually showing you that. It's 0, 1, 6, 1, blah, 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 blah. It keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And you could count, if you wanted, you could count. And if you counted, you would find there was 100. I don't suggest you count. Okay, please don't count. Instead, the documentation clearly said that if you want 200 values, you need to put how many values you want in the vector here. The bigger the number, the more values x1 will have between 0 and d1. We want exactly 200. What I'm going to do now is I'm not going to have this print out. I'm putting this to not print it out. I don't want to see 200 values. I'm not going to count them. So if you want to see how many values are, you can use the function, I believe it's called length. We'll just try it out, see if it works. Probably good to play music when you're coding because the waiting time. 200! Excellent. Now I'm ready to press this pretest button because if we go down we can see that x1 is a pretest. It means that we can ask anytime we like to see if we've got the right answer. We've got another pretest as well. Run pretest. It's, it's running. Oh, do, yes, it's correct. Okay, so that worked out. Now make sure you don't alter as you go ahead writing more code, leave this code alone and don't give a new value for x1. We don't need this here. This just printed out how long x1 was. This was the bit that gave the right answer. Okay, so what's next? Okay, let's move on to straight away to task 3 because it's quite similar. We're going to create another column vector. So let's go back to task 3 and have a look. Bit of a longer text. We want to create a column vector for y1 for all the heights above the horizontal positions given in x1. So, a bit of a long sentence. What does that? So, this is now going to try and explain a little bit more what this means. This means that once you've created your vector y1, when you use this notation here, this gives you the first element of y1. And it's saying the first element in the vector should be the height above the trajectile when it's at the horizontal position x1 first position and likewise for any other position ahead. Then there's a tip on how to multiply a vector, two vectors w, v and w. If you want to multiply each element of v with each element of w and create a new vector, use dot star star is by itself is just matrix multiplication and you can use dot like this to make every element in v squared right let's break that down in steps okay so um first of all how do you get the height above a horizontal position well there's a formula for it there's an equation here is the equation that gives you the height above the horizontal position x so we're going to need to again use what we just learned to write this equation down in parts. Make it easier to write down. So I'm going to do that first, okay? So let's do that. So, oh, sorry. So task two said that we, to get task two correct, you need to assign the variable x1. So let's copy this code over here. We've already done that. And look, we have already assigned x1. So we've done it that. Let's move on to task three. Task three, we need to go and open the formula for y1 at the same time we're coding. And you can step-by-step step copy that over. I'm going to do that quickly for you now because we've already done that slowly once. We've already got the value for theta one. We have it in radians. And if you look up the documentation, the tan function gives you the tangent when the argument is in radians. And it is. We're going to need these different parts of the equation. Okay, actually, I'll first just write out what, what I'm doing. I want, oh, I don't want that, I want y1, 
I'm going to uncomment this now, to equal x1 times some expression given by the formula, okay, plus, or maybe minus, x1. Now I want to take the, uh, x1 is a vector, and I want every element in the vector to be squared. So we were told to do this. And then we're going to multiply this by some other term. In the end, we're going to add it to y0. This is all from equation 1, where we now have to say to MATLAB what is q2 and what is q1. If we look at the equation, q1 is just the tangent of theta1. And q2, what is that? That's a half, so I'm going to represent a half by 0 0.5, times gravity. We've already specified gravity above. It's going to use the same value from before, divided by the initial velocity times the cosine of theta1. And now we want all this thing below to be squared. We don't need to use a dot here in front of the square because this here is not a vector, it's just a number. Let's just give that a run and see what it produces. I'm going to remove the semicolon so it will print what is y1. OK. It's a column vector as well. That's because x1 was a column vector, and it has a bunch of values. It starts at 3.5, good sign, because that's the initial height for the projectile. And it ends at... Oh, 200 values are difficult to look at, aren't they? Zero. If you think about it, that's correct, OK? So it's a good sign as well. Right, so as you can see, it's quite difficult to look at column vectors. Look at vectors of 200 elements. So let's put the semicolon not to look at it. And let's have a quick explanation about this dot square and dot star, OK? So let's make a new vector, v. Let's make it 1, 2, 3. And let's get another vector, w, and let's call that um, 2, 3, 4. So if I want to multiply each of these elements, if I want to multiply this one, the first element, with the first element of w, and then create a new vector, which I'm going to call vw, I want to be 1 times 2, then I want the next element, let's not leave any spaces there, Not to, to 2 times 3, and I want the next element to be 3 times 4. We can do this much quicker just by writing v dot star w. So I'm going to leave the semicolon out on both these, and I'm going to leave it print. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put a semicolon here, and I'm going to ask MATLAB, is this equal to VW? When you put two equal signs, when you put one equal sign, you're making the name of this variable equal to what's on the right. When you put two equal signs, you're checking if these two things are the same thing. And what I want to show you is that these two things are the same thing. So I'm just going to leave the equal equal, and it will say true if they're equal. OK, here's V, here's VW, answer, logical array, 1, 1, 1. What it's saying there is that the first element was equal to the first element of the, the equation. They're saying it's correct. It's saying the first elements are the same, the second elements are the same, and the third elements are the same. Um, so I believe that if we wrote an if statement here, if, and then we want some code to execute, this would work. Let's just test that. If this works, we can display, hello, we were right. I'm not entirely sure this works. Oh, I think the display needs just one character like that. And then if it's not true, I want it to print out, um, sorry, Art, you need to revise MATLAB, which might be, might be the case. It might be the case. Let's find out. OK. So it's going to execute something if this is true, and execute something else if it's not true. Let's run that. Run the script. Hello, we were right. Ha! So 
Yes, they are true, they are equal, the logical array 1, 1, 1 meant that these two things are equal. Okay, so let's remove this now. We, this is not part of our solution right now, but I want to show you that if you do, um, if you were to do something crazy like, well, we don't do something crazy, just do this. If you were to do this, the power of 2, the answer is going to be um, the vector 1 to the power of 2, which is just 1, 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, and 3 to the power of 2, which is 9. Okay? So that's just an explanation of how to use this dot star. So let's remove this now. We've given an answer for task 3. Let's check if it's correct. Run pretest. Don't press submit unless you've finished. It's running, 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 running. Yes, it's correct. And here it shows you the code of how it checks if it's correct. Don't worry about this. You don't need to read that code specifically. Okay, that's it for now.